Welcome back. Now, Patricia DeLille is in a good position. Her party won two seats in Parliament, and yesterday she was sworn in as the Minister of Public Works and of Infrastructure. Well, DeLille is the only non-ANC MP in Cabinet. She's often campaigned for state-owned land to be released for public housing and is promising to continue her fight for spatial justice. So she joins us now from our Cape Town studios. Auntie Pat, thanks a lot for joining us on Newsnight uh, this evening. One may say congratulations. I know that uh, we've got quite a lot of work to do as being sworn in as the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure and uh, many speculating that you may have known a little bit or Birdie may have whispered to you that in fact you may have been uh, sworn in as a minister. So I must ask you, did you know? No, not at all. Uh, certainly if some of those people are Sangoma so they can see into the future um, I, it's certainly not true. Um, I was asked by the president on Wednesday afternoon, half past two, uh, to come up to come and see him. I finally arrived in Johannesburg at six o'clock the afternoon and had a meeting with the president at eight o'clock that evening. Um, when, you know, you call by your president to serve your country, I agreed. And, you know, the next day I had to stay over to be sworn in, and I didn't come prepared. I didn't have clothing. I had to go and buy shoes and a dress uh, because I was just not prepared. But I'm very honored and humbled uh, to be able to serve my people and my country. Mm. I mean, speaking on this issue of uh, serving, it almost appears as though you've been placed quite correctly in this Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, especially with what Good has been advocating for. I mean, one such a uh, um, top of your manifesto was this issue around spatial transformation. Talk to us a little bit about this the concept of spatial transformation. Yes, certainly, uh, I think as a country as a whole, uh, we have not done enough in terms of transforming the apartheid spatial planning. In fact, we continue to put poor people very far away from opportunities, building houses on cheap land. And um, we, we do need to start now by integrating our cities and towns and bringing poor people closer. And we should start right in government. All three spheres of government have got access to well-located public-owned land, and that public-owned land must be used for public good. So the department certainly op provides for an opportunity to start engaging with the different sectors uh, in government to make sure that we bring about a spatial transformation in our country. I mean, around that issue of spatial transformation also comes with what you were advocating for when um, you were still um, the Cape Town mayor, the city of Cape Town mayor, advocating for issues around, you know, the national land in itself to be freed up for, for issues of housing, etc. So now that you're at the helm, now this is, this is your portfolio now, it's squarely on you. How do you ensure that uh, some of those policies that you were advocating for, obviously under a different political party, will now be met as now you've been called by the national uh, government to actually advocate for some of those issues that you were trying to tackle whilst you were the city of Cape Town's mayor? Well, it's certainly also in line with the National Development Plan. It's the only plan on which all political parties have got a consensus in this country. So within the framework of the National Development Plan, I can exercise um, uh, that authority to make sure that we begin to, to release this well-located land for affordable housing using public land for, for public good. So it's nothing new. It's already in the development plan. It is just not being implemented. Mm. I mean, not being implemented, and, and one such thing also comes into mind is the issue around non-implementation of infrastructure, especially when it comes to schools. And we do know that, uh, you know, especially when it comes to education, the education department wanting to perhaps speed up the processes of infrastructure development within the schools around maintenance. We've seen horrific stories of, um, you know, buildings collapsing and children dying as a result of issues of infrastructure development. What do you do? Are you going to now try to mitigate that issue? as soon as uh, you, know, you start the ball rolling, that you're going to hand over and take over that portfolio and say, listen, guys, I know there were mess-ups uh, before, but now that I'm here, we're going to do some good. How are you going to turn the situation around? Well, in terms of the, the infrastructure development a part of the department, it's something new. It has never been there before. And I must be honest, I'm there for one day, and I'm still busy reading and trying to find out how exactly 
infrastructure having been added to to public works how the two can com work uh, combine um, I will only be able to make public pronouncements on this one I've once I've got more information mm. as to how we make sure that we develop infrastructure because I have said uh, during the election campaign that is as, as politicians we must also stop lying to people to say we're going to create jobs it is not the job of, of government to create jobs but government must create the conditions conducive and the environment for the private sector to create jobs mm -hmm. and how we must do that as all government spheres is that we must invest in infrastructure we must ensure water security electricity security that the economic roads of our country is in a workable condition then of course you will attract foreign direct investment to come in so infrastructure is key but then also we need to find partners to help us with the rollout of infrastructure because of the backlog and and you know because of the the the, the long tedious processes within government uh, we also need to find a way of 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 not only making sure that every cent that we set aside and it's billions that we've set already and spent in this country on infrastructure that is actually spent on infrastructure and and some of the money doesn't disappear somewhere along the line mm. and I mean you can appreciate for a fact that not only will you have the Democratic Alliance by the way whose leader Musi Maimane during um, uh, an interview with ENCA was uh, insinuating that in fact it was a well orchestrated plan that you are now been sworn in as a cabinet minister and you've taken up uh, this role of uh, the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure. But, you know, I'm going to ask you about that. We'll get into that issue of uh, the DA leader, Musimaman, in a short moment. But I must ask you, how do you ensure that good and, and the party good that you have advocated so so vigorously for that the mandate, the manifesto, the workings of good do not get drowned out by the occupying of seat because it's easy, Minister, to get sw swallowed by the workings and the daily operations of being a minister because now it appears as though you're working in alliance with the ANC government and now on the other side you still have to keep good alive. You still have to keep the mandate alive and still be the opposition. My question to you is how do you make it so that you are not siding with the enemy and you're also maintaining true to your political party because I would think that's the first thing isn't it to ensure that you maintain and remain true to good as the political party that you've fought, fought hard for and, and who said I am not going to do that I'm just one day in the ministry and I can tell you I come I've run a city of 27,000 employees, 11 departments, and I was still able to do political work. In the case of good, we have achieved in four months, we've almost achieved 70,000 votes. We already have a plan in place to continue to prepare for local government elections. We've got our strategy in place. I've got a good team of competent people who are working with me that are out there on the ground as we speak. I remember, remain the leader of good. I will do my political work because, you know, if you get a call from the president of this country who asks you to come and serve your country, there's no way that you can say no. And I will prove people wrong that you can do both. It's a matter of strategy and planning. And those people that are doubtful uh, before the time, let's wait and see. Uh, you, you, you can't really accuse me that already I'm doing nothing. Mm. I think people are speaking from a platform of ignorance. They're trying to compare me with previous uh, uh, leaders and so on. And I can't be compared to anybody. There's only one Patricia Dallal in this world. And I, I, I also refuse to be compared to anyone. I will continue to lead good. I will continue to serve my country. And you can do both. Okay, well, on that note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask to listen to um, a, a clip of, yes. of the DA leader, Musi Maimani, and then we'll talk a little bit about this. But let's have a, a, a listen to what the DA leader, Musi Maimani, had to say uh, when asked about the question of the appointment of good leader, Patricia DeLille, for the ministerial position. Well, it's not up to me to decide. What I know is that it was a well-executed ANC campaign that's worked out well and should be rewarded. And so I think it... Appropriate, uh, that Spell that out. Are you saying that you think that it was on the cards all along? Yeah. And more than anything, it's for me, the focus is.
Now, Patricia DeLille is now part of the ANC's infrastructure. She now serves in the same cabinet with the team there. And now what we've got to look at is hold her accountable as we would any other member. Well, uh, he's alleging that uh, this was all part of a well-orchestrated plan. What do you say to that? Well, I, I really feel sorry for Musi Mamani. You know, he is just a scripted spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. You know, they tried to dig a grave for me. For two years, they tried to dis destroy me. But they actually, they fell into the same grave. So I will not give him credibility to respond to the nonsense that he's talking. And that, you know, he should rather be saying, as the leader of the DA, who is going to hold him accountable for losing almost half a million votes? Does he not want to blame me because the DA lost half a million votes? They must go and do some introspection and find what is wrong with the party. South Africans are sick and tired of this negativity. The country is calling on us to work together to save our country, to save our democracy. He said in Parliament the other day that he will collaborate with President Cyril Ramaphosa. So really, I, I don't think it's worth uh, to waste, waste my energy on responding to him. Um, I, I, I wish him well in, uh, in, in his endeavors. And, and I'm asking, please, can you just leave me alone and continue saving your own uh, life in the DA? I wonder if he's listening to you right now and maybe, of course, he's taking those words into consideration. Auntie Pat, we're going to leave our conversation there for this uh, evening and I know that you've got a big job ahead of you at taking up that uh, ministerial uh, position there. That was uh, the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Patricia DeLille, just uh, giving us insight in terms of what she's got planned for her actual portfolio. On to sports now.